Coach Flynn, uh, win tonight, seven matches to three over Bloomsburg, 28-13. What do you tell you guys after a 28-13 win, seven matches to three? Well, you know, you just try to focus on the things that, you know, each kid needs to work on, but, you know, it was supposed to be a closer match, and, you know, the 33-pounder, they were favored, and we majored the kid, and 49 turned into a fall, and that was a tight bout, so, you know, uh, those first couple weights, we kind of set the tone. All right, got a big one coming up with Pitt. Uh, two two weekends. Mm -hmm. what, what's the training methods between now and then? That will be for the EWL title. Yeah, I think just keep keep working hard. You know, individually at the end of the year, we we try to focus on the things that are going to help them at the NCAA tournament. And um, if they're continuing, you know, to improve, I think you know the Pitt match and the other ones take care of themselves. Um, one thing we're focusing on is just getting healthy. You know, we haven't really, and I know a lot of teams are like this. We don't complain too much, just trying to get all of our starters in the lineup. So, you know, Jared sat and Phil sat today, and we're hoping they'll be back next weekend. Um, so, you know, just trying to get healthy and, and get better. Okay, the message to your guys, you know, if you lose the duel to pit, if you were to lose the duel to pit, does that matter that much to you? Yeah, not being the duel champs, but then maybe coming back and winning the tournament. Uh, we try not to talk about losing, though. <laughs> Never, huh? No. I mean, you, you're focused on winning and putting yourself in a position to win, um, whether you're the underdog or, or the favorite. Uh, but, you know, I, I, the best teams and the best kids keep winning. You know, yeah, the, the most important thing is the NCAA tournament, but, um, you know, usually the guys who do well at the NCAA tournament do well at the pit duel or at the Cleveland State duel. So we just... Every match is important. You know, if, if you don't put equal emphasis, um, then I think the kids decide, you know, well, uh, it's not that important. Uh, I'll do good at the end. It is important. So it's important that we do well, and it's important that we beat Pitt. You know, we're, we're focused right now on Cleveland State tomorrow and, um, and then UNC the following weekend. But, you know, we want to win them all. <laughs> you know, we put in a lot of time and effort. So, you know, to not want to win or not have our goal to win every duel, it's, it would be crazy. Okay, you guys uh, had a national finalist 125 pounds last year. You had Fendoni at heavyweight. Two weights that, you know, maybe you could have thought it would, it would have been difficult to fill, but it doesn't look like you've had really much drop-off at all. 125 pounds, Eric Morrill. Give me, what, what do you think, man? He's, he's had a great year. Um, we knew he was going to do well. He, he worked out hard and, you know, benefited from having Donahoe in the room for a year. Um, you know, he's had a great year. He, he uh, won the, uh, the Reno tournament, and he's done really well at some other tournaments. I, he can compete if he's wrestling his best. He can compete at the highest level with the best guys. So we kind of knew, you know, that he was going to do well. And, and obviously Chris Bertzler was a, uh, you know, a kid that won a couple matches at the Nationals last year, and so it wasn't a, a real big surprise for us. So, um, you know, our, our expectations are high. So, you know, it's, it's like you talk to Honeycutt, you know, our, you know, people say, oh, well, Honeycutt, where'd he come from? And, you know, he's training his ass off, and we expect him to, to win the Nationals next year. And um, if you don't have those expectations of those guys that are redshirt and like Morrill did last year, then they won't step in and, and you know, fill the shoes of a, of a Donahoe. So, um, but those guys are having good years, and, and we expect them to do well. Has Birchler bought into your system? You know, a little bit. You know, it's difficult when he, he's doing a good job. Um, it was hard for Paul, too. It, it's not that kids aren't um, hard workers. It's not that they don't. They're just used to a different thing. If you, if you, you know, if Paul Donahoe hears, you know, Mark Manning's voice for four years and then he comes here and he hears a different voice, it's just different. You know, he has the little things. Uh, you know, we, we had some battles over some little things and, um, what to do the day before, and he said, I like to do this, and I said, I like to do that. and um, Same thing with Chris. It's just um, it's a little bit of a give and take. You get a kid that's, you know, it's kind of like training a, a, a kid at the freestyle level. You know, if you have a kid that's 28 years old and they're used to doing certain things like three days out of an event or how they train, you know, it's hard to, you know, get them to, to accept some of the uh, new ideas. But Chris has done a nice job, you know. Um, Hopefully, you know, the best part of his season here is, in the, you know, the next month and month and a half. If there's one thing you could think of that you guys really need to work towards between now and the EWL tournament, what would that be? 
Um, well, I think each kid is different, you know. Um, you know, for like Jared King, he has a few few technical things, but, you know, just trying to get healthy. Um, same thing with Phil Morricone. Eric Morrill, we're trying to get him to finish matches off. So, you know, every kid has different things. I, I, don't, I don't think I could put a finger on, uh, you know, what it, our team needs. I think it's more of an individual thing now. Okay, right now I'm looking at probably about eight or nine, ten guys qualifying in the national tournament. Uh, obviously you want ten out of ten. What are you going to do to get ten out of ten? Well, those guys, uh, there's a couple guys that are really going to have to win out. I mean, there were one or two uh, that weren't ranked. We have a couple guys ranked low, like 25 to 32 or 3. Um, it, the best way to get your ass to Nationals is, you know, to win the qualifier. So that's, if they win, you know, their next whatever it is, one, two, three, four, six, seven matches, they'll go to the National Tournament. So, you know, that's what we're focused on. If they keep winning, they'll go, you know. You got anything else for me? I got one more question for you, but you got anything else wrestling um, related? No. Nope. This is not wrestling related. Shoot. Okay. I see the extreme couture shirt on. Is that a cost check gift? What's what's going on? What's, uh, what's up I with that? I don't know. My wife got me this. I don't know. You know, couture is just a lot cooler than me. You know, he wears the hat and he's a badass, and I wear the hat, <laughs> and I'm a train conductor. Okay, so, okay, okay. You know why? I don't understand. Who are you that. taking tomorrow? Who are you taking tomorrow? Couture or the Ohio guy Coleman? Man. I, I don't like to pick amongst wrestlers. Um, I, you know, you're gonna I, abstain. I haven't. Abstain? I'd like to abstain. I, I haven't seen Coleman fight. I didn't see his. Well, I actually, I might have saw part of it. I haven't seen him fight a lot, so you know, Couture's been fighting a little more regularly. So maybe I'd lean towards to Couture. All right. You know, I, I plus, I got the look. I was gonna say I was gonna give you a chance to abstain, down. but hey, hey, yeah. thanks for the time. I'll be with you guys at Pitt, and we'll be here for UNC.